Uh, my name is Matt Wright. Hello, I'm Yanni Nakhara. Um, we're both uh, creative directors from a small kind of independent uh, graphic design interactive company called Urban Reaction Research Lab. Uh, we have our own small portable dome and we've been basically producing dance films for the last, well, for this year. So I'm a 360 photographer by sort of commercial trade and kind of fell into the dome out of interest a couple of years ago. So, and yourself, so how did you get into it? Well, maybe like I produce some of the projects, so I work more like a producer in this sense. And just working, we had this commission to develop dance films, and that's how I work it into this field. So, from photography to dance. Sorry, from, from photography to dance, that's uh, that's quite a step. Uh, yeah, what what was basically um, because I do 360 photography and light trail and kind of fairly experimental work. We started both documenting the work of a ballet company and then that kind of they liked the PR images we were producing so they could see the use of my 360 panoramas as digital scenery so we started shooting the kind of background stage sets etc um, and once we'd started utilizing those and projecting them so they didn't need to make big backdrops and stuff it seemed like a natural progression for us to start experimenting with that and film and then once we'd done that and had our own dome it seemed to make sense to try and make a full dome dance film because it's it's a it's a the medium is kind of perfect for dance in the sense that lots of forms of dance are a response to an environment or an emotion or a feeling and when you've got a bigger canvas to explore dance within such as the dome it kind of opens up new possibilities in both areas so you've in, do you invested in a dome Yourselves? Yeah, we uh, we got a quote from America, and it was about two hundred fifty thousand pounds, and we didn't have two hundred fifty thousand pounds, so we worked out to do it ourselves and did it for significantly less. Oh, do you build? You built your own? We built our own. Yeah. Yes. We w built it. We were working in an exhibition that it was mainly happening in Wales, in Spain, and in Brussels. And because one of the things that we wanted to make possible for the people coming to the show was to feel immersed in the spaces where the project was based, that it was still works in these three in these two areas. So we mainly, mainly yeah, we our dome, have it in the middle of the exhibition as the main installation, and people could feel inside these factories that we explored previously. So is it portable? You can move it around. Yes, it takes three of us. I mean, we were trying to find this balance between what provides... We didn't really like the inflatable solutions. We didn't like the turn up, pull it out the bag, stick a noisy fan on, crazy movement. So we wanted something that was solid, so uh, we, we sourced a seven, seven and a half meter geodesic dome frame and then we built our own negative pressure system and worked out how to do projection on a budget. And So yeah, we, we have one of the world's first gorilla domes we call it or ghetto domes so are, are, you, are you going to uh, publicize it or have you kind of uh, uh, well, the, you know, the nice thing about the project we've just been working on the dance dome is uh, Carol who you'll probably interview at some future point she's the dance producer f for Wales so she's in a new role organized by the Welsh Arts Council and her remit is to showcase the best of Welsh contemporary dance outside of the region and also to try and bring international practitioners basically just to push dance within Wales so she could see that the dome was a really really good interesting new unique way of taking dance out to the people and bringing in a new audience you know uh, it's hard to get people especially out in the valleys to to head on into a, a stage theatrical performance even if it's a comedy night let alone if it's a dance performance you know the word dance scares quite a lot of people um, so for her the idea is we take the dome out to shopping centres, we build it overnight, the next morning you, you go in to do your shopping, there's a big igloo in the middle of nowhere, free shows. I mean, 95% of what we do is designed to be free access, you know. So, yeah, we, we turn up, we put the dome up, we show the content we produce for the dome, and then we pack it down and run away. So, uh, that's, that's incredible. That's, 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 that's beyond gorilla. That's, <laughs> that's like ninjas. <laughs> so... Um, what do you think the uh, public perception is of of the dance format, but also the full dome format in quite a, what we would say, out of the way of the, the general metropolis of, of the London areas? Um, I don't know, Carol might be, possibly, I might 
I might bring her in in terms of how you perceive uh, Hi. how you perceive dance and, and the dome. I mean, outside of like big. Can you rephrase? Well, it? well it was, it was, it, the, more, the question was more like like you're going from no domes at all in Wales yeah. to this uh, very exper experimental art installations that go around. Uh, what's what's kind of the response of the public been? Like? Uh, it's been amazing actually, we've, we've presented it in Swansea uh, as part of a dance festival and Wales Millennium Centre as part of the Cardiff Mellor so we naturally had quite a good footfall. So uh, initially people were quite intrigued and they didn't really want to go into the dome until they had a sneaky peek really. Well, there um, queue. Yeah, there's, there's a, a queue. queue, people yes. really want to join a queue but if the doors open and there's no queue they're a bit nervous. One of the things, we did have uh, questionnaires, uh, and I think, and I'll have to check, but I think 93% of people hadn't experienced an immersive environment before. So that was, a re that was really quite telling, and that 97% said they would recommend it to a friend, which is great stats for us. Um, yeah, I think people were quite quite uh, overwhelmed by it and it was, certainly was quite a, a, a great experience for them. It came out a little bit dizzy and it's a bit wow. <laughs> I think what, was, what was nice from our perspective was it wasn't just the dance arts crowd you know you had people that were literally going going to the supermarket to buy their food or walking their dog or out for the melee you know the the, the food festival so people were literally discovered we had builders and all sorts in there that because because the dance was woven into this visual experience, they weren't necessarily off-put or scared by the fact it was dance. You know, it was one of the aims, or certainly one of my aims as a creative producer for Dance in Wales, is to get dance out to the people. Uh, so to remove those barriers where people don't necessarily want to go into the theatre to see the strange contemporary dance or what they label it as. So this was a great opportunity for people just to come and experience something different that happened to be dance. So do you think the alienness of a dome, that's something that they've never seen before, removed the, the barriers to, to perhaps entry? Uh, yes, but and also to contemporary dance. So it also has that... that uh so, so just um, going the, upwards through the hierarchy of, the, of, the, of funding and, and the Arts Council, how are they perceiving this new kind of uh, disruptive media? Uh, it's it's going down really well. The fact that we've already won an innovation award, an international award, is great for Wales. It looks you know, great on on the, our portfolio, um, and I think that they're really quite pleased that that we are perhaps leading in the dance uh, immersive environment. So yeah, Wales is very pleased, and the Arts Council are yes are championing it, haven't they? Yes. From day one, I mean, they could see the potential for for the uniqueness of the delivery format as well as what that enables us to play with in terms of allowing the different choreographers that are based in Wales to experiment with their, with their practice. So where, where next? Where are you going to take Dance and Dome or are you going to, are you going to give up? Next, next is we're developing a new film. Uh, so we, we feel that we've had an opportunity to experiment with three different choreographers, three different styles and formats. So now we're developing a new film. I don't know whether... Uh, we haven't announced it, so this could be the official announcement. Uh, it's actually uh, an adaptation of a really well-known uh, dance uh, production called At Swim, Two Boys. Uh, so we're going to reduce a 100-minute show to 20 minutes for the Dome, especially for the Dome, uh, and then tour that next year. Um, hopefully to open air festivals across, you know, across Europe. That's, that's what's next. Uh, this is uh, just a, a, a more of a technical kind of question. So, could you just run through the process of how you would get, how you start a project, and how you would visualize, do you picture it or you photograph it or whatever, and how it's perceived by the public? Just talk through that. Uh, I guess the, the the most simplest thing was we kind of knew we had the dome we were promoting about a year ago to Carol about the fact that we could see it would be good for the films. She went away, got this amazing job, and. Uh, and, and could champion it so she came back to us um, added in her own thought so basically we, w we wanted this opportunity to experiment so we found three different choreographers that were all Welsh based um, we went in we gave them early talks and sort of tech talks about how they might want to think about the choreographic elements because 
certain things are possible with the technology that's that's available, certain things aren't, um, how much we were willing to experiment, what we could lay our hands on, all that kind of stuff. So we kind of briefed the choreographers to, to think, but we also needed them to keep it open enough that when it actually got around to the filming, um, we were we had this ability to experiment on the spot. And we had ideas that we wanted to, to try out. Um, we then went away working with their their ideas we did some storyboarding and that kind of went backwards and forwards for a couple of months and then it was just a, a crazy four or five week period where we we had a welsh crew we also had some international crew members so we had like a academy award winning time-lapse artists come across from america and help us out um lighting sound until you've got the camera on the set the lenses the backup lenses the people that help push the dolly the dolly the choreographers, the dancers, the environment, until you know what the weather's doing. And, I mean, there's so many variables that it was just, we did three, three weeks solid filming, one project the first week, shift choreographer, shift location, shift shooting style. And all of this happens this March. I yeah, mean, so, so this this year, really. It's all it's all happened in the last ten months, basically. Yeah, so. we we pur purposely thought let's work with three very different choreographers to uh, and and their brief was to do something really quite different and for them to be quite imaginative. Uh, the fact that it's not a flat screen, it's all around, was really exciting for for the artists, something that they could put their minds to. Um, so. Yeah, we, it was three, a, a one week shoot for each in different locations. Some was green screening, uh, some was night shoots, which were quite um, extraordinary. Um, the moon wasn't bright enough, but um, yeah, so we, we, we really did try to explore so that we could learn and then use it for, for the future. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite, uh, quite a, an astonishing achievement to make that meant that much uh, in such a short time. And also, we had so many volunteers, people who want, who heard about it, wanted to get involved. Um, I think in in all, 42 people were involved in in the three weeks. It's like a, a feature film of ambition. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it went, I, I do believe naivety was a massive thing that helped us through this project. Yeah. In the sense that the the team was amazing because. People wanted to give everything they could just because it's new, just because it's an experience, just because they might learn something fresh. And that, that was really good to us. But without a doubt, I think if we'd have known what we were biting off, we wouldn't have gone for free films off the bat immediately and then tweaking the dome and doing the tour straight after. And so it's really just, it's been an amazing year of testing with some good results. And we're looking forward to capitalizing on that spending longer developing at Swim 2 Boys. The Earthfall production, which is an adaptation of the Jamie O'Neill book, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful book. The dance performance is a beautiful adaptation of it, so we've now got the challenge of taking that one step and being true to both the book and the, and the physicality. Another layer. Exactly. And one, one of the things that, uh, well certainly I'm interested, we're all interested in, is, is what the Dome can offer the dance medium. Uh, and just the, the movement of it. So the viewer actually has has movement as well. They're watching things come overhead, and and it's it's a fantastic medium for for physicality. So that's something that we really want to push. Is that this medium can be used in other ways as well? Because it, you know, when you see uh, like dance rehearsals, of, well, I don't know much about dance myself, but you know, you, you, they're always within a space, and then they're always on a stage or in a contained area. So it must be uh, like, how did the dancers feel to be kind of liberated from, from the performance? The piece is what was working with free runners. So that's very much about being in the urban spaces and moving around. So that was, that was hard for, for our cameramen to, um, to be able to track that. Um, I think the dance, dancers found it really interesting. Very, yeah. Yeah, extreme. It's very yeah, yeah. Yes, and, the, and there wasn't an awful lot done in the rehearsal. It was, uh, you know, as Mattiani was saying, it's very much about experimenting with the camera and on set and uh, with with the green screening and then out outside in the very very windy mountains of Treville as well. Yeah. I think mainly for the choreographers, it was the challenge of not understanding what they were choreographing for, how it was going to be filmed, where the camera was going to be positioned, how the camera was looking, you know, the size. So you get 15 helpers out of the way because you're filming half the world at once. It was the so. invisible movie, really. We were all hiding, and so it was challenging in that respect. But I think it was lots of improvisation, mainly on each day, and they had to adapt to the circumstances of the environment and the technical circumstances, too.
and the weather. No. And the, weather right? the only people to have ever filmed a parkour sequence in an abandoned quarry with snow on the ground in full dome. And a swimming pool, is that right? Yeah, there's a swimming pool. Yeah, in a cemetery, a, oh, a night. First ever nighttime candle lit cemetery scenes. So it's lighting for a whole <laughs> environment where it become the challenge as well. Using that daylight, it was fine, but at night time, no, no anymore. <laughs> you know, and it's so new and it's such a, you know, like, not only are you pushing a brand new aspect of, of Full Dome, you're actually, you know, championing the live live capture stuff, which is especially people like us have really uh, shied away from, due to the the complexity, the, the complexity and also and also we like hiding behind our computers because we're very shy, <laughs> so you know we don't, we don't like to get outside. So you know that all the the complexities of of keeping cameras and crews, which you would normally have hiding behind, uh, uh, you know, yeah, how just do, do you just just leave it re like remote control camera setups and all that kind of stuff? So. So you're you're really exploring a whole a whole new world that's not really been yeah. very very flexible cameraman thankfully <laughs> he did an awful lot of crawling yeah. under the yeah and just, under just the, something yeah. as simple as a dolly shot when you're pushing a very expensive cinematic dolly which has a lot of weight to it you need to put your back into it but if you're filming dance you need to get the feet because you don't really want to see the top half of a dancer when so much is the feet are critical so we're having to shoot very low angles with a slight tilt and to get the camera that low we've we've got the poor cameraman basically walking around like this <laughs> and uh, it's just logistics like that you can't even comprehend until you get close to trying to pull it all together but we were really adamant from the offset that we didn't want to do a live action film we didn't want to do a time-lapse only film we really wanted to see what happens when they all yeah mix up collide in the middle so we tried as many different techniques some worked some different some shots didn't make it through some ended up on the editing floor um, but we're really glad we tried so all right that's a fun year of experimentation that's great so um, how do you see the future then for yourselves I don't know. Um, I don't think much in the future, maybe. We just deal, yeah, we kind of deal with the current, and the current at the moment is, oh my God, uh, the, the most interesting thing about At Swim 2 Boys is that the stage adaptation is performed on a wet stage. So all of those problems we had last time, now we have to add water into the mix. So that's all I'm thinking about at the moment. How do you do upward shooting shots with water everywhere? So... I'll worry about the future when it comes around. <laughs>